here comes Whitney, and Whitney throws haymakers, and Whitney, God bless her. Here comes Whitney. Here comes double Whitney. indie media award honoree Whitney Webb from the Unlimited Hang from Unlimited Hangout, which is the outlet that she started. She also publishes for indie media award honoree T Lev. So shout out to T Lev. We're gonna show a little video with her on there. Well, we have a little video. I'm not gonna show, but. Give you a link to that too. But Whitney comes in with a haymaker on Michael and says, Hey Michael, um, I covered the CTI League in depth over three years ago, and he barely scratches the surface about why they're so sinister and also seems to downplay about how it was chiefly created by an Israeli intel operative. Michael never mentions that. Mm. It CTIL got into misinformation as a side gig. The bigger problem is that this spook parade has had access to the critical systems of major U.S. hospitals and critical infrastructure, including water systems in the U.S. for years. It was founded by a foreign spy. Which, to what foreign power? I bet I, I, bet I could guess. Well... We already said I'm but, so there's the USS Liberty down below. Yeah. That same foreign spy mm -hmm. co currently works with an obvious intelligence front company that routinely blames major hacks on Iran and other adversaries of Israel and or the US with little to no evidence, China as well. There's a much bigger story here than mm -hmm. online censorship. Will Schellenberger go deeper when Iran Hacks U.S. hospitals, water systems, etc., and the war drums are beating. Hope you all remember Netanyahu's positive reverberation speech on Iraq, the USS Liberty, WikiLeaks publication of Vault 7, free Julian Assange, how neocons have wanted war with Iran for decades, and CTI League, etc., etc., etc. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Mm -hmm. Like. I like it better than anything else. Yeah. Whit Whitney is just amazing. And so our friend, the MCG Wire, posted that um, Whitney went on with Ryan Christian from T-Lav to cover this article from three years ago. And this is about a four-minute sure. clip. It was only three minutes. Well, I was I was actually gonna I was actually gonna I actually have her her article up, or I I had her article up. Uh, what happened? Now it's gone. Uh, here it is. Here's the unlimited hangout article. So meet the IDF cyber linked cybersecurity group protecting U.S. hospitals pro bono, and this was the other thing that Michael never covered. How did they get in oh, with everybody? No. How did they get in with everybody's health data? Because they did it for free. The people in the government never questioned because, well, pff, we're getting a fucking bargain here, boys. Oh, of course. Bro, it's free. It's free labor. It's free. All right. So you let's know, turn might as well let the interns do it. Well, we're going to let Whitney do it while we're here. Question. Actually, too, somebody in the chat mentioned something. What is your mindset about that in regard to like, I, I mean, I don't want to get into like specifically trying to hash out whether we think they're honest people, but like Schellenberger, Taibbi, the Twitter files, you know, I mean, I, I agree that it seems like everything like that that happens seems to be like a watered down half version that's meant to like not to Turn some degree. Little, I mean, there's varying all, points yeah. in there. Some of the some of the things that were well done, but yeah. what do you think? Okay. okay. Well, here, I'm not going to give necessarily my opinion, but I'll throw out some things that I've I've noticed, right? Mm -hmm. um, oh, okay, so what's more. the big push like of a lot of this cyber attack stuff, and in, 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 which includes the agenda of the CTI League? It's uh, ending online anonymity, and also ending right. you know privacy online, including on social media. Okay, uh, Michael Schellenberger is on the advisory board of ARC, the Alliance for Responsible Citizenship, that was shut, set up by Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson, very cozy with Netanyahu, this whole yeah. thing, a CTI league and also WEFPAC, 
the partnership against cybercrime, which you can talk about, led by career Israeli intelligence people uh, who worked under Netanyahu's tenure as prime minister. And Jordan Peterson, uh, once he be entered the Netanyahu fold, uh, has been very vocal about ending online anonymity mm -hmm. and that we need to know who you are online. And this has also been echoed by Zionist neoconservatives like Nikki Haley recently right. as well, among numerous others. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, so why has Michael Schellenberger not really talked about Ohad Zadenberg, the guy that is behind CTI League? I mean, he mentioned him briefly, but didn't go into it at all. And why no mention of what CTI League actually does? Uh, their main focus is not misinformation. It's uh, embedding people. No one knows who they are. They don't even have to be American. Uh, into, you know, allowing them access into critical infrastructure of the U.S., including nuclear reactors, right. dams, water systems, and all of this other stuff. And this is really important because Ohad and Zadenberg's entire career has been focused on Iran. Entire right. career. From the time he was in Israeli intelligence, he was focused on blaming Iran for essentially everything and getting part of this broader Mossad arc of getting the U.S. to preemptively strike uh, Iran for Israel's benefit. Um, and since he left, he works for uh, what is, again, a very obvious uh, cybersecurity intelligence front for Israeli intelligence called Clear Sky, uh, which blames uh, cyber attacks on Iran and has for years with no evidence. And I detail uh, this in the piece yeah. Yeah, that I wrote in 2020. So this is a guy who routinely is fo focused on blaming Iran for cyber attacks. And, and at the same cool. time, he is choosing who gets to be embedded in all of this critical infrastructure in the U.S. at a time when Israeli intelligence has this explicit goal. This is very alarming and never has it been more alarming than it is and right now when genocide. there is a conflict going on where Israel will want the U.S. to be involved and they know it's going to turn into a regional conflict. Right, right. And this is why your work has been so, so important over the years in this specific topic, actually in different angles or different, I guess, topics that relate back to the same main central point of how the IDF or rather the Israeli government in very surreptitious fashion have worked their way into all these intelligence and and cyber aspects. And, you know, like to, to back to your point in this article, like the IDF linked X, Y and Z. And it's it's everywhere. Like it's a really alarming overlap. And that's in no way meant to be some racial point. It's about a government inserting itself into struck infrastructure around the world. And that's just mm -hmm. so alarming. Yep. Ryan is Side Ryan's question. outstanding. Actually, Actually you, you're going to be able to see Ryan uh, tomorrow on Missy Winston's show on TNT Radio. Nice. Yep, Ryan. Um, I like that show. It's a good show. Yeah. How about that? I, I did a fill-in on Tuesday in case anybody didn't know. We're going to come back to this in a second and go back to Whitney. But I did a, a fill-in on Tuesday Vanessa messaged at the last minute, you know, everybody knows this here that I, I helped Misty booking with her radio show. So she messaged me on Monday and said, I'm not feeling so great. I think she had something going on medically and that she needed to reschedule. She'll be on this week now as instead. And I actually had some time and availability and I said, Hey, Misty, you know, how about having me on last minute? And it all worked out. It was great. And I had a blast and thank you, Misty. Love you. And TNT radio is great. And thank goodness for them. Everyone can go listen to that. Um, the the listen back link is on either you can go to tntradio.live and find Misty's show and go there, or you can go to mistywinston.substack.com and you can find either my episode link or the weekly episode. Um, We're fucked. Yes. Well, Misty's not wrong there, but Whitney has this, and this article is a 19 minute long read. So I'm not going to go through all of it, but I started to read it. And I think that it is important to at least identify what she said three years ago before we go forward, because it helps set up what we're going to read. We're finally seeing all the okay. evidence of what she knew and what she said was happening, but didn't necessarily have the, you know, it was written, articles were written about it, but now we've got the actual communications and the, and the back and forth that someone provided. This was more of piecing it together the way that Whitney does because she's the encyclopedia. But what she had said, and again, let's remind ourselves that this was in 
August of 2020. This was right about the time of the Democratic National Convention. This was before Joe Biden is elected president, and we still don't even know if he's going to win. We pretty much assume that Trump is going to win. But what she says, and we're only six months into COVID, there is no vaccine yet. There is no mandates. There are no mandates. There's none of that stuff. Since yeah. the coronavirus crisis began in earnest earlier this year, the strain on hospitals in the U.S. and around the world has been subject of considerable number of media reports. However, hardly any media attention has been given to the dramatic and unsettling changes that have been made to hospital and healthcare information technology systems and infrastructure under the guise of helping the U.S. healthcare system cope with the surge in data as well as an unsettling uptick in cyber attacks. And who orchestrated those cyber attacks? Where do most of the cyber attacks come from, folks? Israel and uh, Ukraine. Iran? Israel and Ukraine. <laughs> oh, and China. They want to they blame China here, too. Over the past yeah. several months, 80% of the healthcare institutions in the U.S. have reported being targeted by some sort of cyber attack, hmm, ranging from minor to severe with an uptick in phishing attempts and spam specifically. I'll tell you a funny story. While I was at my job, I failed a couple of internal phishing attempts, and they conditioned me basically on if you don't know who it is or what it is and what specifically they're sending – don't open it and don't click on it and report it immediately. That is basically the mm -hmm. way that they want it known, you know, that they want it to be. So Whitney talking about getting rid of anonymity is absolutely one of the goals here. All right. And you know, when, it, when it comes to patient stuff, they certainly don't want to anonymize anything. Um about 20% of the hacks and cyber attacks reported by hospitals and medical facilities since March 2020 directly affected the, the facility's capacity to function optimally with a much smaller percentage, including those of those including ransomware attacks, right? Where literally, like, pay us money or we're going to wipe out all your data. One of the reasons for the increase in the success of these attacks has been the fact that more healthcare IT workers are working remotely, as well as the fact that many IT staffers have been laid off or let go completely. So now you've got spread out, spread thin, and nobody going to an office and interacting face-to-face -face in person. So therefore, it's much easier to rob the systems. In, some, in several recent instances, the removal of entire hospital system IT staffs have been tied to a larger effort by the DHS, um, uh, Department of Health and Human Services, the HHS, sorry, to consolidate control over patient data, including coronavirus-related data, with the assistance of secretive government contractors with long-standing ties to HHS. And, and anywhere you see it on their line, this is a Seattle Times article. Here is a Mint Press article about government contractors about this. This is all sourced. Whitney brings receipts. Right. I adore her. All right. The sir, the, and remember again, three plus years old. So Michael's bringing something new because he's got the goods on actually what was sent back and forth. But Whitney knew about a lot of this by piecing it together. And here you go. The Cyber Justice League. The CTI League was created earlier this year in March and has described itself as the first global volunteer emergency response community defending and neutralizing cybersecurity threats and vulnerabilities to the life-saving sectors related to the current COVID-19 pandemic. They now claim to have over 1,400 members hailing from 76 different countries. But they're a U.S. intelligence operation somehow, a military-tied operation? Yep. Okay. How? Right. Because they're a private company and nobody's watching. According to their website, they seek to protect medical organizations, public health care facilities, and emergency organizations from threats from the cyber domain and offer their services pro bono to major hospitals, healthcare, and pharmaceutical companies, as well as U.S. law enforcement and federal agencies. Everybody loves these guys because they work for free. Yep. 
Upon their creation, they sent an open letter to the healthcare community offering to volunteer their time and efforts to mitigate cyber threats and protect our healthcare system. And they got handed the keys to the castle. And what did they do? They used it to censor their political enemies and anyone that questioned their narratives. Since its creation, the CTI League has offered its services to sectors entirely unrelated to healthcare companies and institutions, right? For example, they offer their yeah. services to critical infrastructure systems, like Whitney just said, including dams, nuclear reactors, chemical plants, and others, according to their inaugural, inaugural report and their contact form. Their contact form on their own website. They just, they don't care. This is particularly concerning given that there is no oversight regarding who can become a member of the league, Chris Richards, um, the entire anti-vax hunter group that was formed on Twitter, by the way. I would put them 100% yeah. squarely in the crosshairs of this organization. All right, As one must merely be approved for entrance or vetted by the league's four founding members whose conflicts of interest and ties to the U.S. and Israeli national security states are detailed later on in this report. And she mm -hmm. goes deep, as Whitney always does. All right. Mm -hmm. According to their disinformation work stream, she's got that down. Who some of the members of HISAC which is the Health Information and Sharing Analysis Center that they helped form. ISAC, huh? Yeah, H. Balsack, sounds more like, like, yeah. Sounds like an apple cock ring is what it sounds like, but, you know. Right, so oh, I know. Her pre their president, Denise Anderson, works closely with the NC NCCIC, the Department of Homeland Security. Right, you've got a lot of... Yeah multi-letter agencies here that we don't want involved in healthcare, first of all, and in censoring what we have to say and questioning of government narratives. And there's that guy, Chris Krebs. Remember, we talked about him before, and he's in the Schellenberger article. Well, guess what? She's got a tweet where he's basically bragging about how they're using CISA and the CTI League partnership to combat COVID-19 misinformation. Uh -huh. Look at that, Look at that profile picture. Oh, too. goodness gracious. That's his current profile picture, by the way. Mm -hmm. That's not a screen cap, I don't believe. That is an actual tweet. You can yeah. see because there's links and stuff. Looks like looks literally like Homelander's new outfit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So definitely go through this. this. The links will be in the description after the episode's over, as well as in the sub stack for the episode. Um, so that was Whitney. So she said, again, I covered it three years ago. There's a much bigger story with them than online censorship that you seem to have overlooked. And it is that they are also in control of um, critical infrastructure or have access to it, as well as the data behind that. And they have ties to Israeli intelligence. They have ties to massive censorship operations. But beyond censorship, it's massive control operations. And that's where, where I think Whitney goes with a lot of this stuff. Right? It's clear sky. Yeah. Where they're making multi-billion dollar contracts for Intel front cutouts like clear sky. And they're putting out reports on Iranian hackers similar to Bellingcat. These are Intel-funded fronts that manufacture misinformation, malinformation, and disinformation on behalf of these organizations and whoever else they work for. Okay. Um, there's a Gilead hack. They're part of HISAC. They work in tandem. But they're, what their goal is is to fearmonger about Iran and China now, at least. And we heard what Whitney had to say about that. So 